And finally, the environment. For us at school, that means respect your learning environment. So how can we do that? First, by keeping our classroom picked up and clean. If you make a mess, clean it up. If you take out supplies, put them back where you found them. If you have trash, throw it away in the trash can or recycling bin. I should never find trash in the insides of your desks. At the end of class, your desk should look like this. For years, I have tried to let students eat food in class or chew gum during lessons, but every year, no matter how good the kids seem to be, I always have found food wrappers or food stuck on desks and in desks. I discover the horror of chewed gum wads in desks, under desks, under chairs. It's disgusting. So let's leave the food in the cafeteria and the gum somewhere else. This year, I am hoping to start the year preventing our learning environment from these yucky trials. Respecting our learning environment also means keeping distractions out. Our learning environment should be a place for students to be able to think without their thoughts being interrupted by something or someone. We can work together as a team to make our classroom distraction free. Distractions include distracting students, spinners, clicky pens, and anything else that keeps kids from focusing and learning. Last year, I looked up from teaching and I saw about 12 students all spinning their fidget spinners. It made me feel like the whole room was spinning. Now, I recognize fidget spinners were designed to help fidgety students fidget quietly without distracting others. But now everyone seems to have them and they are distracting everyone in class, even your teachers. If you really need to fidget, I have quiet fidget options for you in class. So come see me after class and we can find a solution for you. And then there is the biggest distraction of all. The phone, your phone, yes, that is right. Thought I would get through this video without mentioning it. Believe me, I know all about it. You can try to keep it in your pocket, in your desk, in your pencil case, on your desk, whatever. But do you know why it is illegal to text and drive today? because it distracts drivers from focusing on the road. In the same way, your phone distracts you from focusing on learning here in our classroom environment. Your brain is trained to release a chemical hormone called dopamine every time your phone dings or vibrates or goes off in any way. You have a physical urge to check your phone and that urge distracts you away from whatever else you were thinking of. To remove the temptation completely, we will put our cell phones in the cell phone caddy behind the door in our classroom that corresponds with your number, which you will find out next class. Now sometimes cell phones are wonderful tools for learning. With an interactive game, or to check our grades, or anything else that's really great for class. But with permission, I will let you get up and retrieve your cell phone from the caddy during lessons or activities so that you can use your phone appropriately for these specific activities. Then you will return your phone once you're done to the caddy on the wall so it does not distract you from learning later. At the end of class, you can get, a, get your cell phone and bring it to your locker or to your next class. So you may be thinking, I'm just going to hide my phone. I'm going to stop you right there. Don't do it. Put your phone in the cell phone caddy. You will get caught. I know when you are texting. I know what a phone iPhone looks like when it's vibrating. I know how it sounds when it dings. Even if you try to make it quiet, I know what it looks like. So put it in the cell phone caddy. You will get caught if you try to hide it. After a verbal reminder, I will take your phone away. I will follow our school's BYOT policy, which means the house secretaries will get involved and your parents may have to come to school to pick up the phone for you. Let's not go there. We will use technology in our class and I want you to bring it to class, but put, a, put it away in the caddy if we, if we aren't using it. Laptops or iPads can go on the back table. Ask permission. Use your technology appropriately. When it is time to leave the classroom, I will dismiss you, not the bell. Do not start packing up unless I give you permission. 
wait until I have finished speaking and dismiss you before packing up. It is disrespectful to not only me, but to our learning environment because packing up when others are trying to learn is a big distraction. Now, I expect all of you won't have a problem with these expectations, but consequences are part of life. What happens when you do not follow the rules? We will keep you accountable by following up on your wrong behavior with consequences. One way to avoid the consequences is by thinking before you speak and thinking about your actions before you actually do them. Answer this question in your head. What will happen when I say or do this? Who or what will it affect? The order of the consequences will be as follows. One, verbal warning. We may speak with you, remind you of our expectations, and give you an opportunity to guide you in making better behavior choices. If it happens repeatedly, we will, too, write up a minor incident report, which is a formal document that we write up indicating what you are doing in the classroom that is not called for, recording it for our records, other teachers, and the dean. If you choose to continue the behavior, we will contact your parents or guardians so that they know what is going on. And finally, we will get the dean involved. Obviously, some situations are serious, so we may skip to the dean and, or counselors and get them involved right away, but that is the teacher's choice. Our goal is to make this year fun, safe, and memorable so that sixth grade is a successful year of learning and growing up for you as a student.